Today I'm going to demonstrate how I do a western landscape mural on a textured surface such as a brick wall. I begin by painting the sky a light blue. The upper two or three bricks become the sky out there on the horizon. I use a light blue because on the horizon the blue is much lighter than the sky is above us. If you look that's darker blue above and a lighter blue out in front of us. With the help of video editing, it doesn't take long at all to paint the sky blue. Then I take a white paint, about six, so six, eight inches wide, and I blend the bottom of the sky into the horizon area. Again, because the sky is always getting lighter the closer it gets to the horizon. Once the horizon is established, I add the clouds. Clouds are easy to do. They come in all kinds of shapes, all kinds of sizes. Hard to make a mistake with the cloud, but some are straying out. Some of them are fluffy. The fluffy ones, remember, are more rounded on the top and flat on the bottom. After adding a few clouds, I grab my airbrush and I begin to shadow in the bottoms of the clouds, giving them that sense of roundness, depth. And again, clouds are mostly gray, with a little bit of white highlight at the top edges from the sunshine. Next, I add the silhouette of the mountain area off in the distance using the same light gray that I used on the cloud. And I establish my mountain area off in the distance. I fill in the gray areas, and in a short time, I have a distant, misty mountain range. Looks something like that. Next, I take a darker shade of gray, and I begin to define the shadowy areas and perhaps a slightly darker mountain in front of the ones I just painted giving me a sense of a closer mountain, creating the illusion of distance and depth simply by adding shades of gray. The airbrush is a wonderful tool this way. I can get in close with it and do a thin line for definition. I can back it off from the wall like I'm doing there and create just a dusty, misty area. Again, like the uh, shadowing under the clouds. I can get in and define it. I can back off and fill it in. The airbrush is a very versatile tool and I use it a lot in my work. When I'm doing this kind of work, I consider it sculpting with shadows, just creating again the idea of a depth or a shape or three dimensions by the highlighting and the shadowing of it. The airbrush is again a very quick and once you learn how to do anything it's easy so once you learn how to do the airbrush it's a quick and easy tool to have a lot of fun with and get a lot of work done. I do all my work originally in black and white or basically shades of gray and once I've got the shapes defined, if it works as a sense of distance in black and white, I go over that with light colors of earth tones and so forth, uh, creating then the sense of color later. But I lay out all my work originally in black and white.
Once I've established my sense of distant mountains and closer mountains through the use of shades of gray, I can add the color. On top of the base grays, I use a single color of brown. The airbrush again, I can put it on thicker, or I can just dust it on lightly. And that gives me a whole sense of uh, tan, earth tone, desert, mountains. The airbrush is a very versatile tool. You can get in close and just use a small amount of air and get a very nice, dark, thin line. Back away a little bit, kind of like a flashlight, and the spray pattern widens, and there you go with a nice little shadow. Add shadowing more and more towards the bottom and bringing the sense of artwork into the present situation, the actual yard location that we are living in. As we work our way down the wall, in a sense we work our way towards the environment that we are actually living in. It's all done with shadowing and uh, essentially it's just one color of brown paint being airbrushed onto the background, giving the sense of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. I just keep adding details using same color brown paint, spraying it a little heavier makes it darker, and the result is getting a mountain range. Now I bring in the black. Black gives me more and more definition. I only use that in the foreground. Off in the distance it's still just misty. Sort of suggested but not real clear. In the foreground we start to get real shadows. Real outlines. Definition. <laughs> the snow on the top of the mountains and for this I use a paintbrush. I'll take the paint directly out of the paint can a thicker. The airbrush paint was thinned so that it could spray but for the snow I don't want it to be watery and thin. I want it to be rather thick covering the tops of the mountains. <music> distance, a sense of a desert scene coming toward you. Now I have to blend what I painted in with the bottom of the wall. So I take a mid-tone brown, darker than the bottom of the wall, but lighter shade than the brown I have just finished using for the mountains. As you can see now it's starting to flow visually far away right here in the presence. Now I have to add some green, bring some life into it. Grasses grow at the base of the mountains 
and of course they grow usually right under our feet. Off in the distance I use a very light spray, just suggesting grass, just suggesting areas of grass. Then I add the rocks. Rocks bring the artwork right into the present. These are at the base of the wall as if they're right here in the same yard with us. Make the outline, fill it in, and add some details. Even a darker shade of brown. I would shadow it on the right hand side and the highlights on the left hand side. In this case, that's pretty much where the sun is shining most of the time. So I try to make my shadows harmonize with the natural lighting of whatever environment I'm working in. Once I get the rock shadowed and shaped and looking dimensional, we add some weeds. Weeds are usually just a few tightly close-lit lines, which is again why I enjoy the airbrush so much. It's the same tool, works fast. Some of the weeds go behind the rocks, some of the weeds cut in front of the rocks. Simple straight lines. And a little shadowing at the bottom. A little detail on the rocks. And a few more weeds. A little more detailing on the rocks and a few more weeds. Weeds are easy to do. Again, they go fast with the airbrush. A little shadowing at the bottom to give it an earth thing, and then I take a little paper towel, dab it in some green paint, some black paint at the same time, and then I dab in this little fuzzy splotches of paint that look like weeds or grasses or that stuff that grows at the bottom. Dab it on, put a few little dabs on the weeds, and now they have a little bit of a flowering, bushy part of the top. This is all done with paper towel and a little bit of black paint and a little bit of green paint poured next to each other on a flat surface. And just dab it on. Just now I use a little bit lighter green here at the side to highlight the left-hand side of the weeds and giving it a sense of roundness dimension. Then I airbrush a shadow underneath it, bringing it into grounding it literally with the earth. A few dabs of red paint for little flowers and little things that might be growing down there. Add a little bit of blue paint different types of flowers, different types of weeds. Now I use the airbrush to just kind of blend areas, fill in the empty spaces, bring a sense of far away into the sense of close up. A little bit of black, a little bit of green, a little underlining, just adding that sense of shadowing and grasses growing there. Darker green now that we're in the getting closer to ourselves, lighter green off in the distance. And that's how we go from this to this in about 15 minutes. And that's how I airbrush a wall mural. Thanks. <laughs>